Hey guys, Mason here and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you all how to make a low poly palm tree in a blender. Let's get right into this. So this is one that I just finished making. Looks pretty good. So, so we're just going to go ahead and hide this and make a brand new one. So, so if y'all are confused at any point in this video, by the way, you need to look at the bottom right corner right down here. And we'll go ahead and show you what buttons I'm clicking. So, so we're just going to go ahead and go into this view right here. And we're just going to go ahead and click Shift A. And go ahead and add a cylinder. So, so right here, you can go ahead and change it to however many vertices you want. I just went ahead and put 8 because I think 8 looks good for what I'm doing. So yeah, but you can go ahead and put it at whatever you want. So if y'all don't know what vertices do, it's basically just the amount of like sides. Like if we increase it, we we'll go ahead and add more sides. Decrease it, we we'll go ahead and add less. So, so we're just going to go ahead and keep that at 8. Let's go ahead and go back to this point of view so it's easier to see. And yeah, so go ahead and click tabs, go into edit mode. Select this top face right here. You can select the faces by clicking this button right here. You'll probably be on the vertices one by default, but just go ahead and click this one. And then you'll be on face select. So, so this view... Let's go ahead and bring it downward. And so we're going to go ahead and scale it upward. So scale it up. Make sure that it's kind of small. Then we're going to go ahead and click E to extrude to make it bigger. Then S to scale it down. And then basically we're just going to go ahead and keep repeating this. So E to extrude. Make sure it's not too long. And then we're going to go ahead and S to scale it up. And then E to extrude. S to scale it down. You can go ahead and make this like however big you want. And that, that is probably good. I'm going to go ahead and click Control Z because I think I probably want this to be a little bit smaller. There we go. So S, E, and then bring that down a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and keep doing this. I'm probably going to do one more just like this. And then that would probably be good. So there we go. And all right. So that is how long I want it to be. And now to make it like twist like this one does like that what we're going to go ahead and do go ahead and go like this go into edit mode now just go ahead and well we're going to go ahead and select the middle later on right now just go ahead and select the top go ahead and click this button right here and then go into this view then just go ahead and click r to rotate and you'll see this little circle in the middle just go ahead and whenever you click r to rotate it go ahead and use your scroll wheel to go ahead and make it bigger so, so you can use your scroll wheel on the mouse to make it bigger and smaller but let's go ahead and make it bigger so it kind of takes up the whole thing so, so just like the whole thing right there not too big or else it's just gonna kind of be weird but just big enough that it kind of reaches the bottom like that then we're just gonna go ahead and rotate it like this and that is about good and now if we want to rotate the middle as well we can go into this view and then we can also rotate it a little bit like that. And there we go. So that's about the shape I want it to be. That looks pretty good. And now we have the leaves and the coconut stew. So the leaves are probably the hardest part about this. Just go ahead and insert a mesh and insert a cube. And now just go over here and edit mode. Let's go ahead and click S then Z to scale it on the Z axis. We can also go ahead and turn this off. We don't need it anymore. And there we go. Go ahead and make it smaller. And then we're going to go ahead and scale it on the Y axis. So you make these however long you want them to be. If you want them to be like really short or really long, you can go ahead and change that. But I'm just going to go ahead and have them about, actually mess that up, have them about this size. Yeah, that looks about good. Go ahead and go ahead and scale it up a little bit. Uh, scale it down. And that's pretty good. And now click Control R to go ahead and add some loop, loop cuts on this. You can add as many as you want. And this is just like how much it's going to bend. And about 7 loop cuts is good for what I'm doing. If you want it to look more smooth, then you can go ahead and add more loop cuts. But let's go ahead and bring this one back in here. So, so you can see this one isn't like as smooth whenever it bends because there's less loop cuts. So if you want it to look smoother, then you can go ahead and add more. But I'm going for like a low poly look. So I'm not going to go ahead and add too much. Now go ahead and go into edge select. And select this one. And this one right here. And actually yeah we're going to go ahead and need this again. Go ahead and scale it down. Make sure 
kind of use your scroll wheel to make it smaller because we don't want it like super big like it was last time. And just go ahead and do it about halfway. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and select the front. And now we're going to go ahead and scale the front down as well. And let's go ahead and move this out a little bit more. Go ahead and scale it down. And that's pretty good. And actually, let's go ahead and bring it out a little bit more. There we go. Go ahead and turn that off. And now if you want this middle piece right here to be smaller, you can go ahead and hold down Alt. And go ahead and select this line right here. And we'll select the whole line around it. You can go ahead and scale this down if you want. But I would say that actually looks pretty good. Now, once you have this, just go... Well, actually, no, we're not going to go into that view right now. We're going to go ahead and add cuts on it. So if we bring this one back in, let's just go ahead and move this over here. So yeah, as you can see, I went ahead and added cuts on the leaves to make it look better. So that is what we're going to go ahead and add for this one. So make sure you're in edge select. Select this edge right here or any edge you want. And we're going to go ahead and go into the top view. And now once you select your edge, just go ahead and click a V. And V will basically go ahead and cut it. Well, actually, what we want to do before we do that, go ahead and click Control R and add two loop cuts just down the middle like that. You can add one if you want to, but two is pretty good because if you go only go ahead and add one, then it will go ahead and reach like halfway. So, so now, go ahead and select the edge again, click V to cut it, and then move it however far away you want it to be. Mine, just right there. And let's go ahead and make sure we move our camera up so we can go ahead and see it. And now this one, this is just a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and move this one up as well. There we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and head down here, select this one and click V, move it up and then select this one and G to move it down. And now if you look at them, you'll see that you can actually go ahead and see through them. How we can fix that is just go ahead and select the three faces. So this one, this one, and this one. And then just go ahead and click F. And F will just go ahead and fill it in. The same with this, 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 F, there we go. And then we're just going to go ahead and do the same with this. Select these, F, then select these, F. And there we go. Now it's nice and filled in. Now we're going to go ahead and add a curve. So let's go ahead and select the middle one. So somewhere near the middle. Right here is pretty good. We don't really have a middle point. And then go ahead and turn this back on and go ahead and bring it up. This one, I recommend making it pretty big. So pretty big, not too big though. And I would say probably somewhere near there. And then since this front one kind of looks weird, we'll go ahead and select this as well. So Alt click to select that line. And then this one, we're going to go ahead and scale it down because we just want this point right here. And yeah, that looks pretty good. If we want it to be bigger, we can always go ahead and select this and add more of a curve. Which, yeah, more of a curve actually looks pretty good. So yeah, so that is about good right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This one is kind of thicker than those other ones. So we're going to go back into edit mode, turn this off, click A to select all. And then we're going to go ahead and scale it on the X axis to go ahead and make it smaller. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I kind of want the front over here to have more of a point than the back. So the back, what I'm going to go ahead and do, going to go ahead and select like about these, all of these right here. So hold that, there we go. And select these three, going to turn this back on. And going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger because I want the front to have more of a point than the back. And all right, that looks pretty good. So now once you have your leaf like you want it to be, Go ahead and select it, go into edit mode, click 8, select all, and then just go ahead and align it with your tree. So this one, it's kind of tilted this way a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and rotate it, move it down, make sure that looks right. And yeah, that looks about right. So now that we have that, go ahead and move it over a little bit. We're going to go ahead and click shift D to duplicate it and go into the top view. Rotate it 180 degrees to pretty much mirror it. And now we have it right there, which I'm going to go ahead and turn off this tree so we can't see it. And there we go. So now that we have this leaf, let's go ahead and rotate it so it kind of matches the other one. And make sure it looks right. And see, it doesn't look right, so we're going to go ahead and select it and rotate it. So there we go. We want it to be kind of similar to the tree. 
if you don't rotate like each individual leaf to match the tree, then it will probably end up looking weird. So there we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now you just want to go ahead and do that for all of the other leaves. If the leaves are a little bit too big, you can go ahead and select it, click all, and you can go ahead and scale them all down to be a little bit smaller. And yeah, that's about good. Now let's go ahead and add some coconuts. So let's go ahead and select this, move it to the side. Also, if you like how it looks, you can go ahead and select the trunk and then the leaves and click Ctrl J to go ahead and join them together. There we go. And now let's go ahead and add the coconut mesh and spear. And now my coconut, I just wanted it to be like uh, 10 segments and 6 rings. So, so with the segments, that's how many like segments, kind of similar to the spear. Not the spear, the cylinder. And then rings, rings are like how many rings that way. You can go ahead and mess around with this. But I think 10 and 6 looks good for my palm tree. So, so now once we have that, we just have it right here. So we're going to go ahead and click Shift D. And that's because this just looks like a ball. We want to go ahead and add those little holes in the coconut. So, so now that we have this, go into this view. Let's go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees like this. Go ahead and scale it, not that, edit mode, scale it down. Move it up here. There we go. Let's go ahead and rotate it so it kind of matches this. And yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and move it over a little bit. There we go. And... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's actually go ahead and scale this down a little bit. We can scale it up later on. So there we go. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and move it back a little bit. So this one, since it, since it's already straight, that would just be like the bottom one. Then we can go ahead and click Shift D, duplicate it. Let's go ahead and move this one, rotate it. And now we just got to go ahead and make sure it's inside of it. So, yeah, so we'll go ahead and subtract these later on so it actually looks good. So yeah, so this one, rotate it a little bit more. And yeah, that looks about good. Now we're just going to go ahead and click P to make it, make it its own thing. And now these should be separate. Now just go ahead and click this one. Click Shift D, duplicate it, click a mirror, and click... Well, for you, it'll probably be the Y global as well, but it may be different. But yeah, so go ahead and click that, and that will basically just go ahead and mirror it. So it's like exactly even as that one. Then you can go ahead and select all three of them, click Ctrl J to join them back together, and there we go. So let's go ahead and select this one again to make sure we put it in there, and about right there is good. Now, what we want to go ahead and do, well, actually, let's go ahead and move these a little bit closer together, and there we go. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and select all of them, scale them up a little bit, and there we go, which this one isn't inside there enough. There we go. And now, just go ahead and click this one, hold down shift, click this, go ahead and add a modifier. The modifiers are under this wrench tab right here. Click add modifier, boolean, and then make sure it's on difference. Then for object, click this little icon right here, click on the spears, then go here, click apply, and then go ahead and move this away. And then you'll see a couple different holes. Which this one is a little bit smaller, so I'm actually going to go ahead and click Control Z because I want to go ahead and undo that. There we go. Make sure I undo it enough so it still has the boolean. There we go. And now this one, I'm just going to go ahead and move it in a little bit more. And then these ones, I'm probably going to move them out a little bit. There we go. And now for the boolean, I can go ahead and apply that. Delete these. And yeah, that looks really good. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with this one. And now for this, I can go into edit mode, click A to select all. And now I'm just going to go ahead and position it on my palm tree so it looks good. So there we go. Now we have our palm tree, which those are a little bit big. Let me go ahead and select these all, scale them down. And there we go. That looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and select the palm tree, click those, Control J to join them together. And there we go. Now we have our palm tree. Now let's go ahead and color this. So we're going to go ahead and click shading, click new. There we go. I have my color palette right here. Let's go ahead and collect, connect the color right here to the base color. And then go into UV editing. 
and then make sure you're on the material tab right here or else it will just look like this so material tab and let's go into this view and now depending on what color palette you have it may just like look rainbowish like this so click A to select all and then click U project from view and there we go now let's go ahead and click this right here click L and now let's just go ahead and scale it down to the place we want it to be which I believe I did this one right here yeah this one looks pretty good kind of a little gradient on it and now you just want to go ahead and do that for all of the things And there we go, that now looks pretty good. So, so that is how you go ahead and make a palm tree in Blender though. So that's going to go ahead and be all for this video. So go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And I'll see you all in the next video.